Good morning. Welcome, everyone. It's so great to see everybody here. A lot of faces we haven't seen for a while, so glad to see everyone. 
Um, just a couple of announcements I'm going to point out in the bulletin and a few other things. Hopefully you saw the trunk or treat stuff that was on the screens. Thank you to everyone who participated in that. That event turned out well, and thank you, Mallory, for organizing things. We appreciate that. There is an announcement in the bulletin about pastoral care that Pastor Yost is available. His phone number is there. If you would text him, please put your name on your text so he knows who he's talking to until he gets used to everybody's phone numbers and everything. Um, he's kind of trying to figure out, okay, there's a situation, but who am I talking to? So if you could add your name to the text the first time you text him, that would be great, or just call. Either way is fine. November 13th, we will have our Harvest Home celebration, so we can bring your donations that Sunday. Um, Reese Across America, we're going to be doing that again. And Elaine Rocky is leading that for us. So if you have any questions, and thank you to Julie for supporting her in that and, and helping get that project off and going this year. I can't believe I'm going to talk about Christmas poinsettias, but we are. Um, <laughs> there are order forms in the back, and there are order forms in the bulletin, and I'm not sure, probably the newsletter they went out in as well for November. But November 25th is the deadline for poinsettias for Christmas, so if you'd like to order those, please um, do that. Choir is going to meet each Sunday morning at 8.15 to practice with Theo, and the praise team will start meeting next Sunday after, um, we will have first Sunday fellowship next Sunday, so after that, um, praise team will be meeting then as well. So if you have any questions on that, see Theo. And Thursday night is Fall Festival wrap-up. Anybody that wants to come just to kind of give your feedback from the Fall Festival, anything we want to change, we kind of want to get things on the books for next year so we're ready to roll. So that'll be Thursday night at 7 here at the church. We'll meet in the back. Anybody that wants to join that group, please do. The Disciples and Wonders Sunday School class is going to meet downstairs in the social room today, and Life Group will meet behind the kitchen. So everyone is welcome to stay. Thank you to Jerry and his family for all the treats they have back there. Lots of goodies to um, purchase. I guess if we're talking about Christmas, it might be good Christmas present time. <laughs> so if you're interested in supporting that. Any other announcements I didn't cover? Okay, well, we will begin worship with the ringing of the bell. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome everyone as we gather together again to worship God. We want to give thanks to Jerry and his family for presenting uh, today and a, a celebration of the way we carry out uh, the mission that we've been called to, to share God's good news in, in each and every place that we might find ourselves in. It, it's so good to see everybody here this morning. Uh, let us begin with our call to worship as we indicated for you in the bulletin. We invite the congregation to rise as you're able. Sisters and brothers in Christ, come from every direction, north, south, east, and west. Come bearing all your gifts, behind the scenes, quirky, unique, and more. Come with all your identities, race, gender, sexuality, and all. Let us welcome and worship Jesus with our whole self. Let us join together in singing, Shine on Us.
your grace, grace from your hand, fall on us. Lord, let your grace, grace from your hand, fall on us. That we may be saved, that we Sisters and brothers in Christ, may the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your Spirit. For you are rich in mercy. You lift us up from this fallen world through your Son, and you have rescued us from the hopelessness. Lead us into your light, that all that we say and do may reflect your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. This time, we'd like to invite Jumbo Jerry to come forward. Good morning, people. I've only had three cups of coffee this morning. And when I make eye contact with you, things are going to go very, very wrong. Oh, yes. So first off, I want to, uh, I want to thank Pastor John uh, because uh, we can, if we can turn that volume down just a little bit. Because I'm competing against somebody who's singing Jumbo. To Jesus, to Jesus, your best friend, your best friend. Say Jumbo, Jumbo, hello, hello. Say Jumbo for Jesus every day. He listens when you pray. Stop. Who's in charge here? 
God's in charge. He is exalted. He is exalted. He is exalted on high. Am I right, John? I want to pa uh, thank Pastor John for allowing me to come up here today. When a, a few weeks ago, I said, hey, it, would you mind during the service if I can share with you my, uh, my trip uh, to Rwanda with my, my nephew, Chad? Uh, and he said, oh, not only that, you, you need to preach. What was he thinking? <laughs> I, I mean, Kevin. Really, if you think about it, I mean, come on, we're totally in trouble. Oh my goodness! And then he has, then he has the audacity. Obviously, he's a very, very naive. I said, "Will you be doing the children's time?" And he said, "Oh no, no, you're going to do the children's time as well." Oh wow! God bless you, Pastor John. Thank you. So this is children's time, and I see a few children. And what we like to do, I don't know. Uh, whatever church you go to, we usually invite the children to come up front and then we're going to have a little uh, discussion, a little talk. We're going to laugh. We're going to dance. We're going to sing Jumbo. So all the children, and I, Teddy, I see you. I see you right there, buddy. Come on up all the way here to the front. Come on over here. All the children, come on up. Don't worry. I'm not going to bite. Mav, good to see you. I love the shoes. Love the orange accent. This is nice. This is good. Oh, I love this. Wonderful. Isn't this nice? Oh, this is delightful. Outstanding. Come on over here. All right. So, I'm a little loud, okay? My name is Uncle Jerry, all right? Hello. You know that, right? And then also, uh, it's also called Jumbo Jerry, okay? Yeah. And you know, and I was the hot dog guy. That's right. You know why? <laughs> oh, <laughs> buckle up. This is going to be one heck of a ride. Uh, that's right. Um, I have been here for a very long time. I've been here, uh, and I used to sit, actually, Becky, where you sit right now, okay? I was Jester Jerry back then, yes. Right there about three decades ago. You know what a decade is? I don't either. So I need a CPA. Robert, Robert, where are you? How many, how many, how many years is three decades? 30 years. 30 years ago, I was sitting right over there, OK? And I was participating, because it was my first year attending this church. They didn't have any idea who I was. Uh, but I was with my wife, and I was helping out at Vacation Bible School. Have you ever been to Vacation Bible School? Yeah, it's really fun. And I never, I never experienced in anything like this, Julie. I never did because I saw people singing and dancing and learning the scripture and get growing closer to God. And not only that, there were skits. So there was a lot of humor and a lot of acting. And then they, they would have crafts downstairs and you build things. And then who doesn't like the snacks? Am I right, Karen? The, oh, Karen Mensch always made sure that we had great snacks. It was fantastic. And then you go outside and do fun activities outside. I loved it, and I was sold on vacation Bible school. So from then on, I was Uncle Jerry, and I was going to come out and try to entertain you as much as possible. And so that is the reason why I'm here. And there's a saying right up here on this screen that says, some people cross your path and change your whole direction. You know what a path is? Does anybody know? Now, let's see. If, let me just make the microphones on. OK, you know, what a, you know what a path is? They mess up your path. They mess up your path. That's pretty close. Pretty good. Um, when you walk. When you walk. Excellent, too. Mess up your path. Walk. What's? Walk on the path. Walk on the path. We are amongst geniuses here. Um, do we know what a path is? A little ducky. A little ducky? Okay, that, I like duckies. Julie, do you know what a path is? If you're following Jerry, it's a zigzag. <laughs> <laughs> Kindly leave. So yes, a path, it's kind of like a road, okay? Like you go from one point to the next point. So if I was to walk over here to John, that gets me on a path 
to see John. And so, what I'd like you to do is I want to take you down memory lane on a path of memories that got me to here, because I'm going to be talking about following our path to our purpose when I do the sermon later on, okay? Hey, buddy. Yeah. He just wanted to touch it. That's all. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's very nice. This is very nice. I like, I like this. I don't blame you. So we're going to walk down the path of all these memories that brought me to my purpose because during my sermon, I'm going to talk about the city of, Rejo of joy in Rwanda that brought me all the way there in, in February of this year. And I learned so much but it was because all the paths that I've taken when I was here at Dreisbach 30 years ago today. So, all right, I need you kids to stand up. All right, you ready? You're gonna, we're gonna, you're gonna follow my path. Sandy, hit it. Hey, follow me. Yeah, everybody can say it. You sin when we pray. A little louder now. Follow me. I know that path wasn't right. Follow me here. Listen, that you can say when you came down to pray. Jumbo, jumbo, it means hello, hello to Jesus, to Jesus, your best friend, your best friend. Okay, say it. Say jumbo. I can't hear you. Hello, hello. Jumbo to Jesus every day. This sins when you pray. Boom. Huh. Huh. Oh, look at, look at this path that I'm on. I didn't look. It's Miss Judy. You know, she's to blame for all this. Did you know Miss Judy, 30 years ago, she said, Jerry, 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. You think it's more than 30? I'm not really good with math, so. 30 years ago, she asked me to be a part of Vacation Bible School, and that path changed my whole direction. It was crazy, and I learned so much from her. So, we gotta give you a big hug, Miss Judy. Can you stand up? Okay, hold on. Would you like to touch it with the nose? Because... <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much for everything you did. <laughs> yeah. She said, I lost your mi my mind with you, Jerry. <laughs> you want to talk to my 89-year-old mother back there? She's lost her mind with me a long time ago. Am I right, Mom? Oh, yeah. All right. Hit it, Sandy. Your best friend. Your best friend. Say Jumbo. Jumbo. Hello. Hello. Jumbo for Jesus every day. Listens when you pray. Huh. Interesting. The two stooges. No, I'm not joining you. Now, for those who do not know, um, this is uh, Pastor Mike and Miss Ruth, okay? And, uh, you know, they're very special people in my life. I met them th over 30 years ago, and huh, I would do uh, Christmas plays with Pastor Mike, and believe it or not, he was the straight man, and I was the comic relief. It's kind of strange. He would let me basically, how can I say this, embarrass myself. Yes, and he was delightful in allowing that to happen, and then Miss Ruth, Guess what Miss Ruth called me during my favorite, absolute favorite Bible theme, which was called um, Son of God, a prayer safari. She called me Jumbo Jerry. Can you believe it? Jumbo Jerry. You're the one that came up with that. And it stuck. And it had meaning because when I went to Rwanda, guess what happened? I went to one of the classes where they were learning that language. And these kids that you're gonna learn about, 
they learn three languages by the time they get to sixth grade. And it's, the, that language is called Swahili. Well, they don't speak Swahili. They speak uh, Kirigandan. Kirigandan? How, how do you pronounce it, Chad? Kiryawanda. Thank you, Jen. They speak that, okay? They don't speak Swahili, but by the time they get to sixth grade, they learn that language as well as English. And I heard the word jambo being used. And I, they, one of the children asked me in English, what's your name? And I said, huh, my name's Jumbo Jerry. <laughs> and has anybody here, let's ask all these adults here, has anybody here ever had that kind of thing that happens when you have a rush of memories come right back at you right, and go, oh, this is my purpose. This is the reason why I'm here. When I crossed that path, everything changed. So, group hug, stand up, stand up. You, oh, Mike, you're, you're, you're getting in. I'm, it's going to be glorious. Thank you so much. Oh. Oh. That's enough. Okay. All right. And one more path that we got to follow. Who do I choose? Come on. Jesus, to Jesus, your best friend, your best friend. Say Jumbo, Jumbo, call me. Hello, hello. Say Jumbo to Jesus every day. He listens when you pray. Come on, stop. Oh, man, oh, man. Who is... Okay, kids. What happens in life is this, you get taller, because last time I saw you, Mav, you were like here, like in, the, in, in like six months, you really grew. It's amazing. Well, I see somebody here that I remember when they were your age, they were a little kid, and then all of a sudden they get facial hair. <laughs> what is going on here? And you know what? I can't believe it, but now he is married unbelievable not only marry but he has children right huh come over here uncle jerry <laughs> come on over here that's i'm jerry hey brock come on over here for just a second uh, uh. you're following me in a zigzag oh god <laughs> He's also a doctor, so I have to keep it clean. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. You were the inspiration for all this as well. Mm. How many times am I going to cry? But four. That's, I, <laughs> my family has an under over on how many times I'm going to cry today. They said four. And then my nephew Chad said, it's going to be an ongoing one cry fest. <laughs> but thank you. I remember when you were this little and then participating at Vacation Bible School. So no matter where you go in life, kids, all right, no, most important, always help and volunteer because you're going to change people's lives. And this kid changed so many, and you volunteered. And then you went to Africa as well not too long ago, right? Yes, I did. Yes. So I am proud of you, of the man you've become. Bring it. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Okay. All right, follow me up over here. Come on. Over here. One Jumbo, more time, Sandy. Jumbo, it means hello. Come here. Come on over here. Hello to Jesus. To Jesus. Your best friend. Your best friend. Yes. Jesus, your best friend. How about it, right? Thank you for allowing me to show you the path that I went down, okay? And I'm going to talk a little bit more later at during the sermon about the wonderful things that are going on at City of Joy, Rwanda, okay? So, can we pray? Let's go. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the paths that you opened for us so that we can grow closer to you. And now we say this in the Lord's Prayer who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, kids. Good seeing you. Okay. the word of God in our first scripture lesson from the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verses 10 through 18. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. The multitude of your sacrifices, what are they to me, says the Lord? I have more than enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you come to appear before me, who has asked this of you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths, and convocations, I cannot bear your evil assemblies. Your new moon festivals and your appointed feast my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Even if you offer many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Encourage the oppressed. Defend the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Through your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. The section, second scripture reading comes from the book of Psalms, uh, chapter, 20, or chapter 32, 1 through 7. Blessed is he who trans, whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered, Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, in whose spirit is no deceit. When I keep silent, my bones waste away, though my groaning all day long. For the day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said I will confess my, confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. Surely when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place and will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Here ends our scripture reading for today. May God add his hearing and blessing to his word. Amen. This morning we gather before God and our special love that we have received through Christ Jesus. We gather together because we have been brought together out of God's love to share in God's blessings, to share in the generosity and the grace that is God, to share in the opportunities both here and afar to share God's good word with God's people throughout the world. We are blessed today to be with Jumbo Jerry to share 
in the mission in Rwanda. We gather these gifts today to share in our hope that as we continue to shed and to spread the gospel with all people in all places and in all times, that God will use each and every one of us to bring God's good news to all people in all times and in all places. Let us pray. Good and gracious Lord, we thank you that you draw us together this day to celebrate the new life that we have in Christ Jesus. We thank you that you gather us together to be the people of God, to be sisters and brothers together of all ages. We ask, dear Lord, that you would receive these gifts, that we may continue to serve you and one another with the same love that you've shown to us in Christ Jesus. We thank you that as you call us to be disciples, that we may reach out in the areas like Dreisbach and even in distant lands like Rwanda to share in your mercy, your grace, your forgiveness, and your unending love. Use us and use these gifts that we may further your word, that all might know that the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it, and a, there was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was very rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up to, on the tree and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry up and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, he is going to be a guest and, and uh, of one who is a sinner? Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, look, Half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay them back four times as much. Then Jesus said to Zacchaeus, Today, salvation has come to your house, because you too are a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. Okay, this is nice. Yes. Well, first off, I want to thank each and every one of you. Some of you I haven't seen in such a long time. Now three children. Uh, it is great to see so many faces here and to come out and hear a little bit more about City of Joy, Rwanda, of which uh, I got to had the pleasure of, of, uh, of, of helping out uh, in uh, February with my nephew, Chad. And we're going back again on uh, this coming Saturday, so we ask for your continued prayers. Um, and it is a, an incredible experience. You got to see it through children's time. Because really, you know, Pastor John, last week at children's time, you spoke about we're all children of God. If I wasn't allowed to be in this church and act like I do, and Kevin, I'm sure you can agree with this, I wouldn't, I, I, don't, I, wouldn't, I don't know what I would do. Um, it is an incredible opportunity to act like a child, and you still allow me to walk into this church every week. It is an amazing thing. Uh, and so I appreciate you coming out and supporting me and hearing about God's wonderful things that are happening. You see this quote here in Proverbs, King Solomon, pretty bright guy, I'm a, a, a very bright guy. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's 
purpose that prevails. Interesting, you know, as we all try to connect our purpose in life and the paths that we go down, it's always difficult until we have some time to kind of think about it um, through prayer, uh, through quiet time. For me, as you know, I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> uh, yes, I have a four-hour drive every week, four hours there, four hours back. And now I recognize, ooh, that's, that's really my kind of my prayer, my quiet time. And I'm able to understand things as I get older of, oh, this is the reason why these things happen. And why do I have this quote here? Well, City of Joy of Rwanda was founded about 10 years ago by a husband and wife, Todd and Andrea. They went to Rwanda, sold all of their personal belongings to help out at an orphanage. And when they got there, when they got there, it wasn't everything that they expected it to be, and it was a little bit suspect. And they went, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? But God's plans were completely different. They just didn't know it at the time. So uh, they connected with two of the individuals there uh, and for, because of their incredible principles and said, you know what? There's a need in this tiny little town called Bikiri, which is in the southern province of Africa, and they said, there's a need there. Let's open a, uh, a sewing school uh, for, for women because there is no industry in a, in a majority of Africa, in, in Rwanda. And to, to be able to provide work, uh, which also provides you confidence uh, in what you do, is an amazing thing. So a sewing school, but was that the purpose? What unveiled there was amazing because the moms who went to uh, the sewing school brought all their children there because they had nowhere to go. Lots of kids. And uh, they recognized there needs to be a school. And that's where they connect their path to their purpose. And speeding it up 10 years later, there is now 322 children attending school. Huge, huge, amazing. Um, and as I mentioned before, from preschool and kindergarten, you go in there, and I got to meet all the kids playing on the playground and going into the classrooms and disrupting as much as I can. And it, because that's, because, Nate, that's what I do. You know, I, I'm a disruptor. I, I get in and I get out. Uh, and, and then you, and then like my wife, you clean up the mess, right, honey? Yeah, <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. 35 years of marriage, it's working. It's really working, you know? So uh, they, uh, you go see these kids, and they're learning their native language, reading and writing, along with English. So, and because English, in the majority of things around the world, that is the, that's, the, that's the language of choice and really kind of elevates you to escape uh, extreme poverty. So you, you're hearing these children, children, read and write at such a young age, two languages. And by the time you got up to sixth grade, of which that sixth grade class uh, was being held in the church, they're speaking a third language, Swahili. And thus, when they called me John, when they asked me my name, I knew I had to be John Mojeri. And I, I was, I was um, taken back. And then I realized this is my purpose. This is the reason why I'm here. I got it. So there's this other picture here. And when you saw that, when you saw that picture, and then you see the other one, you look at the in those children. How do you not, when you, when you visit a place, how do you not do something after you look at that? Like, oh, please, Lord, show me a sign. I know I'm from Jersey, but please, you got to help me here. It, it was so, so obvious in this case, um, just looking at, their, looking at their eyes. And so this next picture here will uh, we'll tell you a little bit more. So how did we get involved? Well, back in 2015, Chad and Jen, um, who are deeply involved in their church, Bloomsburg Christian Church in Bloomsburg, uh, they helped support City of Joy uh, uh, Rwanda, uh, and they were building the church there. You have, a, you have a school and now a church. 
It's not just about education, but it's also about learning about Christ and bringing him into your life. And a church needed to be built on the campus. So in 2015, uh, Chad went for the first time, right, Chad? Yeah. And as a part of Chad and Jen's gift to Quincy, who was a junior in high school, um, they said, hey, would you like to come to Rwanda as our gift to you for graduating high school a year later? So Quincy was there. And look, if you notice, there he's in the blue shirt. Uh, he had really short hair, because if you've seen, if you've seen that hippie now, <laughs> it's down here, and he's living in Europe, baby. <laughs> it, is, uh, it is amazing. And he, was, he and Chad were there at the very beginning, building the church, which is an incredible, incredible foundation. Uh, and that's a testament to uh, the mission of what this church is all about. So, uh, Sandy, if you can show me the next picture, you're going to like this. So, as a business owner, and many of you know that I'm, I work in New Jersey. I'm in the wine business. Don't judge me because I drink wine. Just as a reminder, uh, how many pastors do we have here who have preached before? I said, Keith, okay, John. <laughs> but Kevin, Kevin goes, Kevin's like this. Kevin's a wonderful pastor. Uh, and he raises his hand. He's from New York. So you think I got issues. <laughs> oh, gosh. You got Pastor Mike over here. Uh, yes. Uh, when, when you go to a church and when you go to a community, as a business owner for me, I look at corporate culture. Totally. It's, it's a buzzword that I'm sure many of you have heard. But corporate culture means everything to me because it's not going to be around if you don't have that joy in your heart, the passion of what you're doing. It, it, it exudes out of your body, and you can tell. How many of us, look at, you walk into a business, and you go, I like this place because wow, they just really like what they're doing. How many of us, any of us ever had that experience? How about this? How many of us walked into a place and go, bad vibes? That place is not going to last. You don't have it here. That is one thing that I learned is that anything I can take back from my trip and going forward is the word joy has a whole new definition for me. Whole new definition. They have very little, yet they have so much. These women here, look at how joyful they are. They're sitting underneath the tree, weaving baskets, of which you'll be able to purchase over here later on. And you'll notice even in the baskets here, how proud they are of what they're doing. Their names are on the baskets on little pieces of paper, okay? They were taught this trade. Three years ago, this was not happening at the school. It just recently happened in the last three years. Uh, and the reason why? These mothers have their children going to the school. They, they want to learn something. So they're joyous in what they're learning. And I had the opportunity not only to meet them, uh, but talk to them for a few minutes about what they're doing. Apparently, and I Googled this, and Google is a search engine. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Very, very, very cool. I Googled it. There's about seven, in 2019, there were 7.7 .7 billion people in the world. 7.7 .7 billion, okay? How many basket weavers are there in the world? A handful. So I told them, I said, look at what you're doing, and you're only a handful of what is available in the world. That is amazing. Amazing. Not only were they joyful. OK, this is the second time I'm crying. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> Darn you, Chad. <laughs> ah, this next picture, the joy of work. I got to speak to not only them, but the administrators, the teachers. I like, I like, talking, in, I like talking in front of people. I don't know. It's something I like to do. You know, you, Benny boy, you know what I, you know, I like this. I like talking in front of people. I like to try to get them motivated. And when I see something that's right, I have no issues talking. I love it. These moms, when we arrived, and Chad, how, you were crying more than I was. Absolutely. We were there with John, the executive director, and myself, and Skip, who is a, a member of uh, Jen and Chad's uh, church. And they, they had a, a dance of joy in 
thankfulness of their work. And not only that, oh, three times, darn it. <sighs> not only that, they had a skit, a play, um, expressing you know, all the, the sorrow that they had in life and the tough times that they have at home, you know, work, uh, relationships, and then finding a skill that was taught them and how joyful they were. That's pretty, pretty impressive. We walked away quietly and with um, a lot of emotion. And so this next picture, it just shows you that when, you, when you're joyful in everything that you do, something that is so important, it changes your life. That church had to be built, it's not just it's not just the school, it's not just the kid, uh, it's also the work that gives them hope as a, and the church, that community, it, it's growing and growing. There was probably 150 people in the church when we were there on Sunday, uh, at the, just slightly after the peak of COVID, very impressive. Uh, they want, they're, they're wanting. Uh, and it's, it's something to behold. I was led there, and I was fed there. It, it was that simple. Uh, and as a business owner, when I see this, and as a Christian, I'm fulfilled to know that, hey, I can, I can do something about this. Um, I always look at the quote, all right, you know, Feed a man a fish, eat for a day. But you teach the man to fish, eat for a lifetime. That's, that's huge. Um, and you see those principles in play at City of Joy, without any doubt. So this next picture, uh, the joy culture. These are the, uh, these are the teachers. <laughs> They're cool. They're great. Uh, ranging from ages, I'd say 22 to maybe 45-ish, somewhere around there. They got so much joy in their heart doing stuff that I can't even imagine that they're able to do. They live on campus. They live on campus. Uh, they don't see some of their significant others in the, for months on end. In fact, during COVID, some of them didn't see their, their loved ones for two years. It's just there. Uh, their work there, not only are they their mentors, they are joyous. There is one guy there, and I can't wait for my family to meet him. Uh, he's he's like a little little mini me, his <laughs> and his name is Jean Claude. He's got so much energy and so much joy that you you meet him for thirty seconds and you realize, wow. And he's kindergarten or first grade teacher. A male teacher at that age, do you know what impact that has on kids? And they'll take the kids out on the playground, and he's jumping. He can literally, and he's smaller than me. He can literally jump up this high. And he's got these kids all riled up. And it is so incredible to see. And he does it every single morning like clockwork. And these kids are just running around. It is vacation Bible school on crack. It is unbelievable. I'm there and I'm thinking, this is so cool. It, it's amazing. And those teachers there are all part of it. And they're included on things. It's not just, oh, we know what's best for you. Uh, we'll tell you what you need to do. No, they're, a, they're an integral part of everything because of, it's important to be that way. Uh, and what they're doing is, they're, they were helping break ground for two new buildings, two new school buildings, uh, that when we were there, the engineer came up with the plan, and then leaving it up to God, where's the money? We don't have the money. We'll find the money. It'll happen, because that's what God asks us to do. And the teachers were so joyous, because if the students weren't learning, none of this could be possible. Great teachers, great students, and City of Joy, uh, is at the top of the list 
of the entire nation of Rwanda. The government is looking and saying, what are you guys doing? Uh, it is that impressive. And so to be a part of that culture and to see the, the teachers a part of it is remarkable. So at this time, I'm going to ask my nephew, Chad, who he, by the way, that's Diane's, nie Diane's nieces, Jennifer, OK? And then Chad is obviously her, uh, come on up here. Chad is that, uh, obviously her husband. And I always say my nephew, Chad, and then he says, not by blood. I knew as soon as I met him when you were, what, 14? Yeah, 15. Yes, 15. I knew right then and there that we were going to be best buddies. Yeah. So Chad now is. <laughs> Did he give a look? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, not only that, not only that, uh, but uh, his trip to City of Joy. And, you know, over the course of all those years, every time we get together, which is usually every three or four weeks, and, and holidays all the time. Uh, that's all he talks about. And, and until you go, then you realize, oh, I get it. I understand what he's talking about. And he's a changed man. And now you sit on the board and, uh, and the board's president. He, he has been called to a higher calling than I could ever possibly imagine. You're adorable. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Four times and he's here. Oh, man, right next to me. Four times. But can you speak a little bit about what, what are the opportunities and, then, and, and your own experience? Uh, so as Jerry said, my name is Chad Taylor. I am the president of City of Joy Rwanda. I oversee uh, the day-to-day -day operations at City of Joy uh, with a, a whole group of people. Uh, but my mission in, my, in, in life is, is to bring as much information back to the United States and share the amazing work that our great God is doing in a small community in South Rwanda that's one of the poorest places that this earth has ever seen. Um, people who have nothing, uh, who have nothing. I mean, in, in you, when you say nothing, you can't wrap your head around it until you see it. Uh, 2015, I went for the first time as a one-time trip. We were building the church. Yeah, I'll go. I'll do. I'll be fine. I'll go along, you know, because I was asked. Um, next Saturday, we leave, and it'll be my 12th trip. Since I had no desire to ever go back, it was a one-time trip. And God said, no, Chad, you, I need you uh, to do something different. I'm calling you to something different. I'm calling you to, to share the good news of Jesus in a community 8,000 miles away from you, where you live. And I'm asking you to bring that information back and rally as many people as you can to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Um, it's a daunting task. Um, some days I think, I have no idea how this is going to happen. I don't know how it's going to work out. But I know I serve a God that's big, and he's going to do it. So in how you can help, uh, we need all your help. Um, first way you can help is through monthly sponsorships. You can sponsor a child for $40 a month, and that'll pay for their food. That'll pay for their education. That helps to pay our teachers. That's our bread and butter. That's how we make it month to month is through our sponsorship program. Uh, what we try to do differently than a lot of sponsorship programs, we've done, um, I've done Compassion, I've done some of those. They're all great, amazing organizations, but how can we be different? We hired a sponsorship coordinator, and his job every single day is to connect you to your sponsored child in Rwanda. You can write a letter, you're going to get a letter written back. If you want to FaceTime, we can FaceTime with your sponsor. You can get to know who your child is, they can get to know who you are. And it's an amazing thing. I've seen some, we had a young boy at school that decided he wanted to be a police officer. That's what he wants to be when he grows up. We have, uh, our organization is spread throughout the United States. Uh, we have a lot of people from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, the original founder, Todd, was from Minnesota. So we have a lot of churches in Minnesota. So we have a police officer in Minnesota that was like, I want to sponsor that kid. And so he writes letters back and forth about being a police officer. He shares his stories with this young boy. And you see these letters go back and forth. And it's just so amazing to see the connection these two have. And he sent one of his badges, his police badges that they wear on their uniform, he sent over with us. And we got to deliver that to, to this young boy. And like he wears it on his stuff, like he's just so proud. Uh, so you can be a sponsor for $40 a month. You're like, you know what, that's a lot of money. I, I just, times are tough. We have a food program. You can sponsor the food for a child. 
one of the things we do schools just like here, it's about nine and a half, ten months a year. Um, so what we do, because a lot of these children will leave on Friday, and a lot of them will only eat scraps at best until they come back to school on Monday. So we feed our kids all year long, 12 months a year. We eat 300 or 640 meals a day. We feed our kids for five days a week throughout the entire year. So if you're like, you know what, I can't do $40 a month, but I can do 15, and I want to sponsor a feed a child, you can do that. If you want to be involved in a bigger way, if you want to say, you know what, corporate, I'm a part of a corporation and we want to help, you can make one-time donations. You can get involved with this new school that we're building. We felt a couple years ago like our kids were graduating from sixth grade because that's where, our, and we decided, our, we talked to all our sponsors and said, hey, your child's graduating from our school. Would you continue to pay their secondary education somewhere else? And so they said, yes, we want to continue. We don't want that to end. We want them to go, be able to go to school. So we sent them to different schools. Uh, and it became very quick, it became very apparent to us quickly that our children aren't getting the same education that we were getting. To Jerry's point, the best schools in the country are all the private schools where all the people who have money send their kids. The government shows up on our doorstep two years, three years ago and says, Whoom, basically accused us of cheating in our test scores. So mm, you, there's no way these kids in this poor community that have absolutely nothing that live in nut huts can get scores like that. So we said, okay, we'll see. So the next year, our scores were even better than the year before. Now the government's coming to say, what are you guys doing? Because we want to do this. We want to do this somewhere else. We got local schools bringing their teachers to see how our teachers are teaching differently than them so that these kids can learn. These are some of the brightest kids on the planet that have no opportunity, and we're trying to give them one. So we decided, we had our kids come back and said, we don't care, we just want to go to Joy's school. We'll sit on the floor. We don't need a room. We just want to go to school here. So it's like God was saying, it's time. you got to start to build a secondary school. So two years ago, we, we started the process. That Jerry's, when was Jerry was telling you, we started building a school. And we had a donor come forward and say, I'm going to give you $150,000 to get this going. And we just started our first session in our new school in September. We got our first building built. We're on, we have already had somebody committed more money, $100,000 to the new building next year. Um, we still have $75,000 to raise for that for next September, to start the next September school year. So if you're feeling called and you're like, I want to donate to, to building a school, you can do that. All of the baskets, 100% of all those baskets will go back to City of Joy uh, to help those mothers. Uh, they needed a job, and how are we going to help them? Let's give them a skill. Let's teach them something. Uh, so we used to buy all those baskets um, from a different community. And uh, this, is, this goes to show who the people of Rwanda are. So we would buy hundreds and hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of baskets from this lady. And we went to her and we said, would you teach the mothers of our kids at school how to make these baskets so we can sell them and we can give them a job? And knowing that she was going to lose money, she was like, absolutely, I'll do it because they want to help each other. That's what God's community is about. It's about helping one another to grow. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about us. And that's all, why Christ came to this earth, to show us that. And that's what they do as a community, and it's so awesome to see. Um, so you can buy any of the baskets. Somebody buys all those baskets for us and says, you know what, I don't want anything in return. I just want my, my money to multiply for the kingdom. So they buy all the baskets, and then we sell them, and 100, so 100% 100 of the proceeds can go back. Um, what other ways? Um, so if you, if you just want to make a one-time donation, we're more than willing to do that. Everything's tax deductible through a 503 uh, called City of Joy International in Phoenix, Arizona. So um, I just want to leave you with this. One of my favorite parts of every single day is in the morning. There's no cars in Rwanda where we're at, very little. So you wake up and it's silent and it's quiet and you can start to hear the people wrestling. You can hear the animals, farm animals. And, um, and then all of a sudden you start to hear the noise when you're, at the, when you're at the guest house and you hear the kids coming. You hear them coming down the road. 
the dirt road, and they're running. School starts at 8. Those kids are there at like 7.15. Like, they just can't wait to get there. And you remember, you got to imagine, we have kids that are five years old that will walk four to five miles to come to our school because they know it's an opportunity, it's a chance. So they come, and you see them, and they're just so excited, and all those kids run in. And to Jerry's point, um, Jean-Claude will get them all riled up, and they go to, they, you get to see them eat breakfast. And they all, they're all celebrating. They're all getting ready to go to school. But then outside the fence are kids looking through the fence that wish they could be in there. And my, my goal for the rest of my life that God gives me air is to spread as much news as I can about this place so we can get as many of those kids inside that school that we can. But what gives me hope is that I serve a God that sent his son Jesus to die on the cross that for any of us who put our hope, faith, and trust in him, we'll have an opportunity to never have to stand outside that gate because he will welcome every single one of us into his kingdom with open arms. So I just thank you so much to your leadership, for everybody for giving this opportunity to come back and speak again about who, who City of Joy is and what we're doing. Um, but it's all, it's all in the name of Jesus Christ that we do it. So thank you. Amen, Chad. My little boy's all grown up. Uh, this next picture here, there's Quincy in the pink shirt with his long hair now. Uh, Chad and I were there in February, and Quincy was trying to get there at the same time who now lives in Germany. Wasn't able to do so, but he was able to make it in March uh, and visited and was able to see the transformation of what God's work is doing. It's amazing. He's actually there with Jean-Claude, who's, <laughs> I just realized that was Jean-Claude, with the yellow shirt there, uh, and, and the kids, uh, and Quincy says, this place is real. This, it's an amazing thing to see and to witness how God's work is at play every single day. Um, and it, it, it's, it's comforting to know when you hear from your son, who has been there before, and who has a great perspective from a, a, you know, a, a young 20-year-old that sees, yeah, this is, this is real. And this next picture um, shows you uh, looking up to the heavens. That's a real picture. Chad and John and Skip and I were walking down the path past the pineapple, where they, which they grow to help sustain uh, and provide fruit for the kids. And then there's this place where they're also raising bees. And we were talking and chatting, and these three kids, one of them is a guy named Irini and his brother, who is a little bit lower, the one on the bottom right. He's, it, we, actually, we actually sponsor him, grazie Dios. Uh, and they were following us, and then we, we didn't see him, and then we looked up, and we're like, oh, my goodness. We, I have Ajita. And if you're from Jersey, you know what Ajita is. Ajita is gives you, oh, I, my, I'm sick to my stomach. They're up way too high, way too high. Uh, and, you know, when we take our paths in life, we sometimes can go left. Sometimes we go to the right. Sometimes we kind of move forward and plunge forward. Uh, and sometimes we do the ultimate two steps back, one step forward. These kids are looking to the heavens. And as Chad mentioned, they have, abs they have less than nothing. I, I don't know if that's possible. And they're always looking to the heavens. They're looking up. Irene is an amazing young kid. And if you can show this next picture, as he says, that's his favorite view of the valley. He just loves this. Um, it, when you look at everything, you recognize that, you know, when Paul wrote to the Ephesians, we're all God's masterpiece, all of us, no matter who we are. It's amazing to see that God has put people in our lives to make those changes. And I'm going to show you this other. There's uh, Irene, and if you knew Irene, like I know Irene and all of us do, he's, uh, he's 13 years old, speaks three languages, always smiling. He, he, he's an incredible kid, um, and when we would walk with him, he would always grab some grass, put one in his, in his, in his mouth, and, and then put some in his pocket, and he 
said, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm putting it in my pocket for these two pigs that I raise. Uh, wow. And, you know, he is struggling. His, his grandmother is, is, is ill. Uh, he's got a t total of seven siblings living into their ho in their home in, the, in a mud hut, dirt floor, the size of two six-foot tables. And uh, he, he wants us to come and visit him. Uh, so we, we enter into this tiny little piece of property uh, where the pig pen is, and then literally a foot later, you open up the, the door into the hut, and, and there we sat, uh, where seven people would sleep. Uh, and you recognize, wow, what can we do? Uh, and so when I finished, I got to meet the pigs, and so I, I said to Irina, and he's the, he's the guy that's going to make it no matter what. He's, got, he's a connector. He's, He's joyful. He's got everything that you can possibly imagine. And he's, he's raising pigs, not to eat himself, but to sell to be able to put food on the table for his family at 13. <clears throat> and I said, so what's the name of the pig? He goes, well, that's the reason I wanted to bring you here. Jumbo Jerry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mike, Andrew, do you have a pig named after you? I don't think so. Yeah. A pig named after me. I, I was extremely flattered, extremely flattered. Uh, it is, it's something to see. And I'm, what, at, at this point in time, I'm going to ask the choir to come up, OK, uh, and get ready to sing. Uh, and if you could show me this picture here, here, Sandy, right here. Is there? Yes. We have to be reminded that we all are a part of God's kingdom. Uh, and it all started way back when we were a little girl, right? Uh, and now your grandparents, uh, our path leads us to our purpose. You know what my purpose is? I'm going to join Chad, whether he likes it or not, at least twice a year uh, to help out this incredible organization, okay? And I asked, I asked Theo if he could sing this song with the choir again, because about a month ago he sang this song, and it spoke to my heart, uh, and they'll be singing. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say the first, uh, uh, read the first verse. It's called "For Everyone Born," and I'm gonna leave you with that. For everyone born, a place, a place at the table. For everyone born, clean water and bread. A shelter, a space, a safe place for growing. For everyone born, a star overhead. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy. Compassion and peace, yes. God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy.
so this is a time after the sermon, so to speak, that we, we talk about our, our joys and our concerns. And uh, so today, it's a city of joy. You brought the city of joy here. And, and even though we're physically 8,000 miles away, city of joy came to us today. And so, when we talk about following Jesus, who's our Savior, our Lord, um, and Sue, it's 59 days, so get your shopping done. It's 59 days to we're going to hear a story about someone who was born in a stable. Probably not that much different, because the animals were there. You, know, you, can, you can smell the hay. You, you, can, you can kind of smell the, both the, the joy of life, but, but the troubles that sometimes life brings to us. And so today, when we think about our joys and our concerns, here at Dreisbach, and in Union County, and in New Jersey, and, and wherever, we must we must remember that the, the biggest joy that we have is we have a God who loves us. And, and we have a God who loves us so much that he brings his own son into our world so that we might, even in the darkest of times, experience joy. Uh, the joy that comes to us when we're able to, to as, as Jerry said, to look into each other's eyes and see that, that we are all children of, of God. Um, so we're going to celebrate some joys here uh, this morning. We're going to certainly show, you know, share our concerns as well. But one of the things that we've, we've done here the last couple weeks, and, and, and maybe we, we need this, is... is uh, we celebrate the joys of birthdays. So who has a birthday this week? Well, who had it last week? We had a whole bunch last week, right? How about next week? So who has a birthday the end of October and into November? Birthdays. Stand up if you have a birthday in November. <laughs> oh, my brother-in-law, Dennis. <laughs> Former oh. member of Dreisbach United Church of Christ, followed by his grandson, Diego. <laughs> Happy birthday, boys. Okay, let's do it, Theo. Oh, yes. Happy birthday. Another joy that we need to celebrate today is all of you. It's so good to see everybody here today, uh, children of all ages, and God brings us together and celebrate that joy. We, uh, even though they're not physically here, we, we want to celebrate a joy of all those who've made all those good goods back there that we'll be able to take to our homes and, and to... Uh, remember, uh, you know, as, as they said, you know, we have opportunities, all of us have opportunities to share in a mission. It might be a mission 8,000 miles away from us, and, and we pray for safe travels for you and the family, uh, but, but mission takes place here, and, and, and this is the mission uh, that we do here at Dry Spot, but it's a mission that, that, that spreads out because uh, Jesus is going to just take us out. Of these doors. We're not going to spend uh, 160 hours this week in the sanctuary. We're going to go out there and Jesus is going to lead us uh, and so we're going to celebrate uh, those joys. So 
do any of you have any particular joys that you would like us to share today? Yes. It is a wow. joy. Absolutely. Checks in the mail, Ann. <laughs> yeah. So you, you've been married 35 years? 35 years, only one argument, it's still going on. <laughs> Mindy and I have been married 35 years. Oh. Yeah. And I look out here and I see some of you who now have babies and I've seen a growing up. <laughs> I, I have to tell, I, I, I co helped coach the, the track and field team for a few years when Quincy was running. And we were going uh, to Williamsport. And the bus driver got us lost. <laughs> That's difficult. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Quincy is sitting two seats behind us. And he says, uh, what are we going to do about this? because one of his events was the first event uh, of the year. He goes, I might not be able to run my event. And, and, and so Quincy says, I think I know the way. Hmm. And, and uh, the bus driver says, well, where do I turn? And Quincy says, the right way. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's my son. <laughs> Yeah, it is a joy to, to see everyone. We, we also have these prayers and concerns, and we have a lot of health concerns of family members and friends in our community, so we want to, to uplift them in, in prayer as well. Other shares, sharing of concerns? Then let us pray. Almighty God, most gracious and merciful Father, we give you abundant thanks for today on this Sabbath morning that we're able to gather together as children of God, as sisters and brothers in Christ. We give you thanks for the gift of creation and the opportunity to share in your holy word and your holy vision for each and every one of us. We give you thanks for your son who came into our world to teach us, to heal us, and to lead us in the way of mission, a mission that reaches near and far. We thank you for all the sisters and brothers in Christ who carry out their mission in so many different ways, a mission of healing. We give you thanks for all our medical personnel uh, who each and every day reach a healing hand to those in need. We thank you for our caregivers we thank you for our educators who, who teach, and we give you thanks for our farmers and those who take care of the land. We thank you, dear Lord, that as we come together as, as your church, that you bless us in so many different ways because you bring us together from all walks of life. You bring us together so that we might share with one another the hope that is ours in Christ Jesus. We want to lift up people in our prayers, uh, Lavina and Tony and Joan and Kim and Dave and all others whom we name before you who have their own health concerns. We pray for all the hospital lives and those who are in long-term care facilities. Continue to reach out to them. Let your blessing and hope be with them. We give you thanks that as we gather today, we know that we will go in our own different directions. Continue to lead us with faith that we may trust in your word and to walk in the ways that are shown to us uh, through Christ Jesus. Uh, and help us to return back here to share in what it means to be your church in this time and in this place. Help us to reach out in the various ministries uh, of the church here and afar. We ask for safe travels for those who will be traveling this week. And we ask that you would continue to protect us and guide us so that we may each and every day wake to the glory of your holy name, holy name to, to see the visions of hope in the way that we can reach out with one another in word 
and in deed. We thank you, dear Lord, uh, for Jerry's presence with us this day. Continue to be with him as he continues in this ministry, with all others who are involved with the city of joy. And we pray that there will be one day that there won't be any fences or walls that will keep anybody out, that will keep anybody excluded from your hope and your word, that the doors will be open and that we will be standing at those doors and welcoming one another, no matter where they come from, no matter what language they speak or the color of their skin or what nation they might live in, but that you have created a place, a welcome place for all of us, and it's called the church here and afar. Be with us this day and always. Guide us into your presence. Let us live according to your peace. And let your sun shine upon us each and every moment of our lives. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And let us rise and join together in singing the hymn. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping. Now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon us with favor and grant us everlasting peace. Amen. Go out with